Okay, this is about deduction. What is deduction? Deduction is to reach a conclusion by logical inference. It is not subtraction as in tax deduction. Okay, so this is about reaching a conclusion from some facts and rules. So we start with some facts and rules and then try to come to some conclusion. That's it. That is basically the crux of deduction. So for example, it could be a simple fact could be it is raining and a rule could be if it is raining then the ground is wet. So can we use this fact and this rule to conclude something new? Yes, we can. The if part is true, then the else uh, then part is also true. The ground should be wet. And it's such an old rule that it has a Latin name for it. It's called modus ponens. So knowing about A and A implies B, we can conclude B. For example, it is raining is a fact. And it is raining then the we will get wet is a rule. And the conclusion would be applying the, fa the rule to the fact and getting the conclusion that we will get wet. You can even do the converse. If you know that B is false, then A has to be false. That is called modus tollens in Latin. The ground is not wet, it's given. The ground is dry. And we have the rule if it is raining, then the ground must be wet. So we can conclude that if the ground is dry, then it is not raining, not A. It's not raining. And then we have many other form, uh, forms of deduction. So disjunctive syllogism basically means from A or B and not B then A is true. So if we are given A or B is true and we know B is not true then we can conclude A must be true. For example Anu says it is raining or I am the queen but we know that the, sec the second part is false. Therefore Anu is saying it is raining. That's known as this is again a Latin word. Disjunctive means or. Syllogism means implication. And hypothetical syllogism, what does it mean? Given two rules, we can con make a third rule out of it. Given A implies B and B implies C, we can figure out from A we can jump to conclude C. For example, if I get admission, I will pass MBA. If I pass MBA, I will be happy. And from this we can conclude that if I get admission, I will be happy. So we can skip the B part. There's, then the next rule is called simplification. Given A and B, we can simplify the this fact and say okay, ignore B if you're not interested in B and just say A. Conclude A or we could even conclude B only. So basically this is a, uh, used to remove irrelevant data. And for example, it could be it is raining in China and India. And you only in, you are in India, so you don't really care about China. Then you can conclude it is raining in India. So it simplifies your deduction. Addition. So what does addition mean? You want you have you, you have a fact A. Then you can conclude A or B is true. That is called weakening an argument by adding extra information. For example, you can have Anu got a prize. And we can conclude Anu or Banu got a prize. So in this case, the second case, we have less information than the first case. But it, the first case implies the second case. And we can even generalize it. We'll see in second order logic, of first order logic later on using quantifiers in the next lecture. We can conclude someone got a prize. Instead of the name, we can just name replace the name by someone. And someone means there is somebody who got a prize, but we don't know the name. We are not going to tell you who it is. This is conveying less information than original two sentences. Then we have reductio ad absurdum. That means proof by contradiction. And you have some assumptions and you finally conclude something false or absurd. Then it means that your assumption must be false. So we can take a simple example. Assume that it is raining and then given that the road must be wet. But we know the road, suppose we can see the road is not wet. So assumption must be wrong and we can say it is not raining. So if your assumption leads to a false conclusion, you, you can actually conclude that the assumption was wrong. 
So this very commonly used in reductio ad absurdum in mathematics. And another important uh, principle in logic is the law of excluded middle. In propositional logic we've been seeing so far, the statement is either true or false. There's no other possibility, there's no middle. Third possibility could be A is unknown. Oh, A is, uh, so in proposition logic, we'll always assign a proposition to be false or true. And for references, if you're really interested in a simple logic, you can look, look up Raymond Smullyan's book, Forever Undecided. He's a lot of books, and all of them are very easy to read, and there are lots of logical puzzles in it. This is 1987 book. And there's a lot of stuff online in the Stanford Philosophy Dictionary. Thank you.